December 1976, I got this from the QFOS archive, uh, Dana Point, California. A mother and their two and her two children driving down the road when this thing described as quote unquote a fat frisbee. That's how it was described: a fat frisbee with a red line on top. And it had literally thousands of these multicolored flashing computer processing lights go right by their windshield. Here's the actual report on this. And you can see this thing right in the windshield. They were startled to see this thing. Um, they were interviewed. Here's my AutoCAD drawing of what it actually looked like. Literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of these computer microprocessing lights were actually seen. So here's the rendering we did. Now, when we do these things, we, we try to take you to the actual site, plus or minus 10 feet. And this is a cutlass. We don't know the color, but this is the exact make and model of what actually occurred during the sighting. And you can see the craft here. Now, within this report, ladies and gentlemen, there is a sketch of what took place next. Very hard to see it. But what this thing did is it tipped up 90 degrees and rolled away like a wagon wheel. It's in the actual report. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, I mean, we've heard this a couple times before where these things tip up 90 degrees and then they take off. In this case, it rolled away like a wagon wheel. Next one, November 20th, 1956, in Connecticut. This is a cross. A uh, woman was putting up clothes on the clothesline when she saw this, what can only be described as a half globe or dome it had these sockets on the bottom, and on each end of the socket, there was a colored light. The whole thing was revolving around, so you can see this thing approaching. Nearly hit her house, and uh, it flew a little bit off to the left, nearly hit the chimney, but it cleared the chimney, and she could see that there was a donut connected to this socket. There were actually three donut ring sections connected to the socket. Each one was separated by a black band, and you can see these sockets here with what looks like Tesla coils. And we've done an enlargement. On the bottom of these donuts, she described what looked like Aztec lettering or Inca lettering or something you would see on Mayan pottery or something on the borders of a Peruvian rug. That's what she described it. Rug. Yeah, this is uh, <clears throat> her original sketch of what this thing looked like. And you can see these designs. Uh, she did a really good job, very impressive. She, she died just a few years ago, so I missed her. But this is her original sketch. And I've done an enlargement here, it shows you these sockets. I've also showed you the uh, colored Tesla coils. And then over to the right, I've done an enlargement showing you what these different inscriptions may have looked like. But this is uh, November 20th, 1956, very good report. January 1st, 1970, Finland, 10 foot in diameter. Uh, you, <clears throat> two skiers are going down the ski slope when this cloud was basically following them. They got to kind of a slight clearing area. And then out from this cloud, there was this beaming light. And then I mean, it's so crazy, but I have to report it. This three and a half foot to four foot tall, what can only be described as like a garden gnome. <laughs> kind of a humanoid looking being. He was wearing this green tight fitting flight suit. He had green boots. He was wearing gloves. He had a wrinkled face with a crinkled nose. He had a cone shaped hat on. And then he had this large optical device that looked like a camera that was moving back and forth. And he was like taking photographs of the two skiers. Now this is reported in more than one publication. So this is uh, January 1st, 1970. Here is the original sketch from the report of what this actually looked like. There were three half domes on the bottom of this craft. And after these skiers had this encounter, within five minutes, one of the skiers started throwing up. He got sick and he, have, he had to be helped three miles back to the lodge by his friend who was also with him too. So not only is it a CE2, but it's a CE3 because it had physical effects as well. So that's a CE2 case there. February 3rd, 1983, Mobile, Alabama. This is a 210 foot long craft by 80 feet high. Primary eyewitness was driving home to Mobile, Alabama after a 9 p.m. dinner engagement. She heard this big booming noise. Her car started shaking, so she pulled off to the side of the road. She looked under the vehicle, thinking that the transmission might have fallen out or something. Everything seemed to be okay there. 
she went another half mile off to a kind of a lit clearing area and she saw this craft hovering 10 feet above the ground. She said it had a tapering after body, kind of like a wedding cake. It had these holes. She, and she, she said the whole thing was fastened by uh, rivets, kind of like these arcane rivets. Looking through these portholes, she could see through to the other side and she described what looked like, <laughs> the way that she described it is it looked like a shipping yard on the East Coast where they were building a battleship. There were these cross beams and girders and bulkheads. That's what the interior looked like. So if we start on the top, it had a transparent section that wrapped around maybe 40% of the upper dome. And she could see what looked like these five foot 10 humanoid looking beings. It was a very antiseptically sterile environment. They were wearing these one piece tight fitting white flight suits. Below that, there was another transparent section. Below that, she could see four box like structures with these shafts sticking out that were about six feet in length. Then there was a door that was closing from right to left. She also identified an asphalt road at the bottom. And on the far wall, she said she could see tubes, pipes, and cylinders on the far wall. Now that's something that I've got on 12 separate cases. These strange pipes and tubes and cylinders are being reported on the bottom of these craft. On the very bottom here, there were two additional gondolas, each containing these same humanoid looking beings. And then she said she could see- hey, I'm in the middle of a, doing a MUFON uh, webinar. Hey, Michael, hold on a second. Yeah. Michael, hold on a second. Hey, Susan, your microphone's hot. Right. So every time you move or talk, uh, we get to hear you. So if you could mute, mute your uh, microphone, Susan, that would help, thank you. Okay, so we'll go back here. Uh, she also mentioned she could see what looked like 24 inch by 24 inch square, highly polished chrome mirror sections that were in the formation of a cross on the bottom of this craft. Uh, here's an enlargement showing you the door closing from right to left. And here you can see on the left hand side, these tubes, pipes and cylinders on this left wall. Again, this is something I've got like 12 separate cases. This is the original sketch from the uh, Afro Bulletin from the actual investigator who interviewed the eyewitness. And this is what we've done this composite from the actual sketch here. All right, we're gonna move on to the USS FDR. This is November, 1958, Guantanamo Bay. <clears throat> they were on a shakedown cruise. I actually interviewed the, uh, the primary eyewitness on this case. This is 9 p.m. at night. And the way the story was laid out to me, and this is reported in two internal uh, newspaper clippings, including two of these uh, flat top news journals. They also talk about this as well. There was a tremendous commotion below decks and all these naval personnel were trying to get up to the flight deck. So you can imagine the chaotic scene here at 9 p.m. Everybody's screaming and yelling. They're trying to get up to the flight deck. And what they saw when they got to the flight deck, here's the original MUFON report, was this 150 to 200 foot long cigar shaped craft hovering over the flight deck. It had these rectangular cutout windows and at least 25 naval officers personnel could see what looked like humans walking back and forth between these windows. They also could feel the heat radiating off this craft onto their faces below. So not only is it a CE2 because it had physical effects, but it's a CE3 because they had interaction with entities. So that qualifies it as a CE3. Next thing that happened is that this thing turned kind of a yellow orangish color and departed at kind of a high rate of speed. But before that happened, Chester Grzynski, who's the primary eyewitness said that what he could see is one of these beings who was looking back at the officers below on the flight deck, raised his hand above his head and was waving to the guys below. I'm not making this up, this is his original sketch. He was actually waving to the uh, people standing on the flight deck below. So what we've done, and I wanna give credit to Tom Bogan, who's my illustrator here. We try to make these cases come alive to preserve an important part of our national history. We did a rendering. This is a rendering of what it may have looked like on the flight deck here. And then you can see this being waving at the officers below. And then we'll go ahead and switch to the enlargement. Here's the enlargement of what this thing actually looked like. So again, this is uh, late, 
1957, early 1958 Guantanamo Bay. This is the USS FDR. This was the first aircraft carrier to carry nuclear weapons on board. It also had a history of these UFO sightings as well. <laughs> 